okay so one of the most frequent questions which is asked by student is how to identify histology slide so whether you are entering into the uh, second year uh, mbbs or you are joining as a first year postgraduate the key always remain the same guys how to identify the slides so first and first and first first point learn to handle your microscope see the powers of the microscope and you should know that we have 4x we have 10x we have 40x and we have 100x so before seeing any section first thing is hold the slide and look at the section first okay if it is like a tubular section so you should know which are the tubular structures which should come into your mind okay it could be fallopian tube it could be an artery it could be vein okay so uh, it can be a luminal structure so like even appendix okay so remember whenever we are holding any slide you should know what a section looks like okay that's the first and basic thing you have to know then look at the stain quality okay so it's like uh, normally we use uh, hematoxylin and eosin stain so all of you should know that you normally hematoxylin you will give you a blue color and blue color is usually to give to the nucleus and you should also know that the normal nucleus okay a uh, normal uh, shade of the blue looking at the normal slides uh, you will learn that slowly pink is usually given to the cytoplasm so cytoplasm usually has pink color okay apart from that you should know various inclusions also can have pink color so pink color is usually for the proteins so uh, also for the glycogen okay so many things can be pink in color but you should be very clear that cytoplasm is pink and some inclusions are pink okay now um, i'll give you an example suppose there is large pink color extracellular deposit which is coming so you should keep in your mind that okay extracellular pink deposit could be a myeloid also okay so remember practice is the key okay so remember seeing slide is the key key keep on seeing more and more slides so go to your lab whenever you go into histology labs in the second year don't gossip there don't think that i'll remember the slide numbers and uh, i'll uh, mark everything for spots don't see the slide as okay there's a cut in this slide okay i know this this is a cut so this slide was fallopian tube okay so do, that's how i did it when i was my second year don't do it like that okay because that's not going to help so how do you do is whenever you approaching any slide think what that structure can be write down in your note and call your you know a post graduate or a senior resident who is posted with you in a lab and ask him or her that ma'am i am not understanding this please tell me this once you have seen that structure you'll remember that for life okay write down whatever you understand and write down whatever you don't understand and then ask your senior resident or a post graduate whether this is correct or not so the key to learning a histology slide is looking a pattern obviously the patterns are going to be same if i'm looking at the uh, goblet cells okay goblet cells uh, let's say goblet cells so i should know that okay goblet cells are there then i should look at the layer are there uh, is there mucosa sub mucosa muscularis or serosa is there or not okay then what is the arrangement you have to identify that way okay let's let's look at one histology section and see if you can identify that so let's say i'm looking at this slide and i don't know what is it so what all you can identify you draw it like that okay so i can see this on the top there are some cilia okay some cilia is there okay so these are some big glands filled with blue color mucus so uh, can it be goblet cells okay let's write goblet cells okay look at this Uh, epithelium okay so the nucleus appears at various levels so looks like uh, pseudo stratified okay so Pseud pseudo stratified okay so i am nearby reaching a uh, epithelium this is probably a pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium with goblet cells okay pseudo stratified ciliated epithelium is seen in respiratory tissue so probably this is respiratory the first point is identifying the parent organ your parent or organ is been identified you are very clear my parent organ is pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium perfect it's respiratory epithelium i'm sorted at this point okay now let's come to the next so this is the basement membrane okay this is the normal thickness okay so it's not very thick and okay so later on when you see a slide of asthma remodeling in asthma you'll see the basement membrane is very very thick so you can immediately identify okay basement membrane is thick this can help happen only when you keep seeing more and more slides isn't it now look at this okay coming below that so this you know whenever we talk about mucosa mucosa has epithelium lamina propria and muscularis okay so there's this this loose tissue here which you can see here write down some loose tissue some empty space is there so this is some loose tissue these are some blood vessels which you can make out okay so this is a part of lamina propria so lamina propria is usually made up of all this loose tissue lam or uh, blood vessels and all that then this you can see here somewhat this 
cut section. This is actually a muscle. That's how a muscle looks like. So here we can see epithelium, lamina propria and muscle. So mucosa is complete. Now here I am seeing some glands here which you can see lumen and it's filled with something. Okay. So this is uh, filled with some granules and here some here you can see some vacuolated spaces are there. So it's filled with some mucus. So there are some glands which are seromucinous. There are some glands here which are present. Okay. So they, they are mucin filled also. So what are these? These are submucosal gland because they are present below the mucosa. We have already seen this part was mucosa. So I'm cl pretty clear that mucosa is clear. Now I'm reaching to submucosa and there are some glands in the submucosa. So submucosal glands are there. Okay, I can see the number. Okay, so number is like a few glands are there. Perfect. So now if my submucosal glands are excessively increased, excessively increased, okay, then uh, then my differential will be and there is no change in the uh, mucosa and submucosal glands are excessively increased, then you should think of chronic bronchitis. Then your differential diagnosis will be chronic bronchitis. Whereas if the epithelium also is showing remodeling, that is your basement membrane has become very, very thick and the goblet cells are increased too much. Okay. And then the submucosal glands are also increased. Both the changes are there in the mucosa and the submucosa. Then it will be asthma. So this will occur only if you read the text, you have to study also and you have to see also. So once you keep on studying and seeing together, you will not miss the diagnosis. Now let's come to the third part. Okay. What is this? Isn't it? So this is looking like, you know, that base is very clear, that blue homogeneous layer, okay, with that lacuna containing some cells. So this is actually high line cartilage. This is cartilage. So once you see cartilage, okay, you say, okay, so I am perfectly clear. This is probably bronchus. This is normal bronchus because here there's no pathology involved. Okay, but uh, yes. Uh, if I see uh, an image of chronic bronchitis, I know that some mucosal glands will be increased. If the basement membrane is excessively thickened and lamina propria is infiltrated by eosinophils all over, okay, then I'll think of asthma. So let's look at those slides also. Let's see if you can make a diagnosis here or not, okay. So let's look at this pathological section, okay. So here, what do you see? Number one, goblet cells are increased, okay. Look at the basement membrane it is so thickened so there is definitely something going on okay so there is definitely a thickening of the basement membrane look at the lamina propria can you see this red color cells so these are eosinophils infiltrating lamina propria and look at this muscle okay which is present in the mucosa i hope you remember we told mucosa has epithelium lamina propria and muscularis so epithelium shows a lot of goblet cells lamina propria is full of eosinophils and muscularis is so much thickened so that's a very characteristic image of airway remodeling i've taken this image from robin's textbook of pathology okay which is one of the very good books okay so and the gold standard of pathology obviously so uh, as you all know that this is basically your nothing but airway remodeling which occurs in your uh, asthma so only when you know the basic, okay, when once your, your basic is clear that, okay, this is pseudostratified respiratory epithelium, lamina propria, muscularis, submucosal glands and uh, the cartilage is there in the asthma. Once you clear, you will be able to see pathology. So write down all the points which you know, write down the points you don't know, ask your resident for help, jot it down. There is no shortcut to success. So don't say that, okay, I'll see these cuts in the slide and this section, a spot number that's not going to help. You have to spend some time for it. And then once you will be able to identify the structures, you will be loving it. You will be loving it, guys. So start from the histology itself, from the first year itself. And once you've done your histology well, the pathology will be a cakewalk for you. So uh, guys, do work on it. Okay, do put an effort on seeing slides. And after seeing slides, draw it in your notebook. That's a very important point. Draw because once you write down, draw with your own hand, it will form an image. It will form an image in your brain of that slide and you'll never ever forget it. So that's the key to I correctly identifying the histology slides and at last make the note of all the images, all the slides you've seen because they are the ones which are going to come in exam and revise them well and there will be nobody who will be stopping you from success. All the very best guys and in case of any queries, do message me. You can message me on my Instagram or on your Facebook uh, or on my Telegram. Okay. All the very best. See your slides. Okay. No shortcut to success.